Hey everybody, today we're going to do some analysis of variance in R. I'm looking at a problem from Probability and Statistical Inference by Hogg, Tannis, Zimmerman. Um, here we have three groups of observations from three different dates. We're looking at resistances of pieces of glass. We'd like to test the null hypothesis that the population mean for each of these three groups is the same against an alternative hypothesis that the three different population means are not all the same. So let's go on over to R. Before I dive into this code, I'd like to just quickly show you the data frame that I am trying to generate to start this problem. This is what we call tidy data. That means that every column represents a variable and every row represents a single observation. This is best practice, statistically speaking, just in general. Um, in particular, R, this is the format that R is going to want when you do the analysis of variance here. Let's see how I generated this data set. So first of all, I just took the data that I was given and encoded each of the 11 observations from each of the three different dates as vectors, December 6th, 7th, and 22nd. Then I combined them all into one long ve vector that's going to have all the different resistances together. So that's going to have length 33, 11 for each of those three um, sets of observations. That's going to give me the first column of the data frame. Now let's generate the second. So I need 11 copies of, of December 6th, 11 copies of December 7th, and 11 copies of December 22nd. So that's what I did there with the rep command. Then let's combine those two together and put those into a data frame using the data.frame command and take one more quick look at it. There it is. So you can see December 6th, 7th, and 22nd, each with 11 cases quick example of what not to do. I think this is very tempting just to take those three different sets of observations and make a column out of each. Getting something like this. This is not a tidy data set. R isn't going to like it when you run your analysis of variance. You are not going to like it as you get to know um, tidy data better. Why is this a problem? Each row consists of three separate observations that's going to make this harder to work with as you um, analyze it statistically. Notice that the categorical variable of date has now been split into three columns. Um, so this is not what you want to do. Okay, now let's actually explore the data a little bit visually and check the assumptions of an analysis of variance. So there are three major assumptions for ANOVA. The first is that the observations are actually independent. That is a uh, study design issue. We aren't really going to get into that here. Um, the second is that the observations in the different groups are normally distributed. And the third is that the variances are the same. OK, so just to start, let's load up the tidyverse family of functions. In particular, that gives us access to ggplot2. So we're going to be able to make some attractive graphs as we go about this. Just as a preliminary step, Let's go ahead and get side-by-side -side box plots. And I'll plot this first, and then I'll talk about the code a tiny bit that I'm using to generate this graph. OK. So side-by-side um, -side dot plots, or box plots, rather. I have colored them um, by the different groups, by the different dates. I've also added, added a sort of dot plot, a, a jitter plot here to show the actual data. So this gives us a feel for the spread in the different groups. Just at a glance, it seems at least plausible that the population mean from each of these different groups would be the same. Let's go back to the code that we generate that I used to generate that. That's up here. So the name of the data set is glass, the categorical variable going left and right is date, and the quantitative variable going up and down is resistance. I then asked R to generate a box plot with those, um, filling with a fill color that is determined by the categorical, categorical variable date. I in particular want to point out the outlier.shape equals NA argument, that's going to ask R not to put in dots for the outliers. The reason I did that was because I manually added dots with the geom jitter function, geom jitter um, command. So I didn't want to double plot those, those outliers. Okay, now let's talk about normality. 
So the first thing that we should do is to get a QQ plot. And here I'm asking R to do a QQ plot with a um, default QQ line. There it is. Um, here the default QQ line doesn't look great. R generates that QQ line using the 25th and 75th percentiles and just connecting um, those two dots. So here it has a different slope than maybe what we would expect. So let's go back and actually generate that manually here. So I am actually going to generate it using the geom ab line command. Um, the slope should be the standard deviation of the quantitative variable we're testing and the intercept should be the mean. So here's what we get. Looks like a reasonable fit to a normal distribution. Certainly not perfect, but hopefully good enough. Remember that um, ANOVA is robust against non-normality, so this should definitely be close enough. If we want to be particularly careful, we can draw a QQ plot for each of the different groups. That's the technical assumption here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to add in the facet underscore wrap command, and I'm going to ask to wrap it by date. So I should get three separate QQ plots here. And I do, each one has a vaguely linear shape. So we feel okay about using ANOVA as far as the normality assumption is concerned. Finally, I at least want to see that these variances in the samples are somewhat close together. So here's the command I'm going to use. Um, I don't want to talk too much about how I'm doing this right now. It goes beyond the scope of this video a little bit. It's going to generate a nice little table for us down here in the console. We can see counts, means, and standard deviations for each of these three groups. Notice that the standard deviations aren't radically far apart. Um, we would love it if they were closer, but say la vie. Also, while we're here, let's notice that the date variable is encoded as a factor. That's a good thing. That means that when we um, built that date vector earlier on, R recognized that we were talking about categorical data and not, for example, char character data, or in a different problem, it might have come up as numerical data. For example, if the group names were one, two, three, and four. If you do not have a factor variable, the best thing to do is to recode it as a factor variable using the as.factor command. Okay, so um, now we're ready to actually run the ANOVA. This is actually the easiest part of the problem. We generate the model with the AOV command. We say that the quantitative variable that we're interested in, resistance, is going to be related somehow to the date variable, the, ca the categorical variable. Quantitative related to categorical. And then we tell it the name of the data set. Okay, we can actually get the ANOVA table out with a summary command. This is typically the thing that you report. It tells us degrees of freedom, sum of squares, mean squares, F value, and the P value there at the end, probability of randomly getting a result greater than that F. Here the P value is 0.136. That's going to be larger than any level of significance that we might want to test at reasonably. So we're going to conclude that there's insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis in this case. Last closing comment. The AOV, the analysis of variance command in R, ends up building this object model that has a lot of different information encoded. I'm not going to do anything with it right now, but I at least want to point it out. So I use the view parenthesis model command just to get um, a, a quick rundown of all the different information that's being contained here. I'll just scan through this very quickly. So all of this can be used um, for different plots or different um, more advanced analysis.